it's in Hudson Mass. But the, but the, react, the funny thing is, is that, you know, even he, who's a guy who's gonna be running a bike shop, is worried about his digital presence. He's worried about the internal systems and how they connect. He's worried about the ability to do the purchasing and connect with the suppliers. He's worried about how his customers can go online and understand at least his presence, his creative, the experience, all those kinds of things. So all of these things come into play when you think about digital transformation and, and what it is. So what is it? You call it the digitization of your business. That's everything. I mean, we've talked about going from paper to the system, but also you're looking at your customer experience. Because if you just put it online and it's not really a good customer experience and you don't actually have good UI and you don't have good design and you don't have an experience that you can actually deliver upon, it's kind of worthless. It falls apart very quickly. You know, it's a focus on those internal support systems and processes and how do you make them faster. You know, a lot of AI and machine language now is used to do a lot of processing work. You add in the robotic process automation kind of work, and all of a sudden you have the ability to do many different things and no code, low code, there's a whole variety of different techniques and pieces that come into play. Channels and distribution. The reality is you have new channels that, you know, organizations never worked across. You know, everything used to maybe be person to person relationship based. Reality of the pandemic, but that doesn't really work anymore. So you've got to figure that out. Okay, policy procedures. The other part is you the term ubiquitous experiences, which means I go on my phone for one thing, the TV for something else, I go in person the next day, you know, down the line. And the reality is I expect things to be the same. All right. In the past, nobody expected them to be the same. Nowadays they do. And then the whole view of kind of growth and how that's driven. I use this company, Spice, which is a company out of Cambridge. I don't know if you even know them or not. But they've kind of taken the whole fast food restaurant concept and they put it online and they made it robotic. So you go in there and you're literally remotely working there. You plug your thing in on the iPad. If you haven't done that, you put it on your phone. You order ahead of time. You walk in, a machine makes it. It has all the ingredients. It spits it out the other end. It's right there, ready and ready to go. You can never actually deal with people. There are people in the back. You may actually deal with them from us, but you, there are people in the back that do stuff and they load up the machine and they do things that you just never see or you don't have to see. That's kind of the one end of the extreme, we'll call that. Um, so we talk about digital transformation. If it's not a constant part of your business strategy and you're not constantly evolving, you're falling behind. If you think about all of these companies, and you'll see some. There's some old names there, such as Walmart, you know, that's there. And there are older technical names, such as Uber and so forth. But, and then the newer organizations that are there, you know, if you're not thinking about this constantly, and you're not looking at your business, and how are you evolving your business, you know, you're basically falling behind because your competitor is doing it. So that's the way businesses have to think as they look at it. And also, because of these approaches, they're reevaluating everything, knowing people inside, for example, Amazon and AWS, if you think about it, they're building new components that make their platform more valuable every day. Okay? And so when you go in there, no longer do you have to add, you know, single sign-on, no longer do you have to add personal security, no longer do you have to add the basic premise, because they're constantly reinventing it, they're constantly challenging each other with it. That's a large company. Smaller companies are competing because they have the ability to find the niche and work in that way and reinvent themselves constantly. You have to look at it, you have to be able to reinvent yourself. All right? And that's where digital transformation is incredibly important because those improvements that you're making to the experience are normally somehow systematically or digitally based. All right? Capital is plentiful. You probably didn't know this as well as anybody else. You need some money? There's a lot of venture capital that's out there. There's a lot of private equity that's out there. The internal organizations like Walmart is dedicating huge amounts of money towards these kinds of efforts. I spend a lot of time working not just with Walmart, but we actually have a some time with other organizations that as well are looking at, you know, reapplying their investments towards these areas, trying to figure out, like it's not, but it's also not just about applying money, but there is a lot of money that's out there, so. FinTech, MarTech, Health Tech, EdTech, any kind of tech. There's a lot of different niches and nuances to this every day where they're looking at how they disrupt these markets, how they provide new things. You take MarTech, for example, or 
impact over those organizations and kind of streams for probably 20 years ago, maybe a hundred different solutions. And nowadays there's a thousand different companies and solutions that are out there. Okay. You look at the new technologies that are coming into play. AI you know, machine language gets a lot of play. You know, quantum computing is getting a lot of play. It's still one of those things where it's kind of figuring out like what is it really going to be useful for and you know, there's always going to be stuff stuck in the back of the back just computing. Nano computing, what's out there and what can you put into that, you know, not only just your watch, but now, you know, your pen, your whatever, it's all out there. It's how you make it smaller, smaller, smaller. You get more power out of it. And as we talked about, I think the whole point is you know, there's more technology in my phone than there's in the Apollo 11 at the end of the summer month. So uh, RPA, you talked about robotics, you talked about not just the robotics in manufacturing, but there's actually a whole process of robotic process automation, which is you even feed all the documents in, does all the optical character recognition, and it puts it all in the form that it's in. It basically can process the claim and insurance in a matter of seconds. When you take the pictures, it has the ability to articulate vector analysis kind of like how serious the damage is on the surface. Basically, you can do the same thing with just your hands. Maybe not quite nuanced, but it can get there. So, point being is that if you have startups, if you have organizations that are kind of focused on different niches, if your organization is there, the money is there as long as you've got the right focus and component. We talked about data. Where data is at the core. Data, data gets talked about a lot. I think it's probably we'll talk about it in a minute because I think it's one of the most uh, challenging areas sometimes. You know, you have data that becomes the lifeblood of these systems and working, and you can tell the difference between an organization that's got great integration and an organization that doesn't. Okay. Whether it's the consumer events, the products, um, you hear lots of concepts and talk about you know data lakes, data mines, data warehouses distributed data, consolidated data. And then the big piece that kind of plays into all of this now is playing even more and more is privacy. Not just privacy here in the US, but you know, if you go external, you know, how do you handle PII, how do you handle some of the nuanced components that are there? There's a lot of talk about, you know, how do you manage a system where the data actually exists in another country on a server there, but is used in another place. Question is where are you technically doing the work when you're you know remote logging into a system that's theoretically working in that country? But the reality is the person is three thousand, four thousand miles away. They're not easy things to solve right now, but there's just nuances of a very, I'll call it, kind of larger issue that's becoming more and more aware. You know, you see the government, you know, kind of trying to get involved. But there are whole industries out there too if they start to lock down on behavioral information and things like that from an individual. You know, here in the US we're an opt-in, not an opt-out. Over Europe, they're all opt-out. So meaning that you have to opt into the program to exclude your data versus in Europe you start there and you've got to opt out to be able to exclude it in Europe. The landscape is complex. It's an understatement. Meaning you know, there are lots of different avenues you can look at digital transformation from. There's this first one that I would like to talk about, which is experiences versus platforms versus stacks. I have these conversations all the time depending on who you talk to. If I talk to the marketing department, they are talking about the experience that they're going to have with their customer, their investor, their advisor, their supplier, whoever it may be. But they think, you know, it's all about how do we make it better. I talk to the technology organizations, they're talking about the tech stack. Developing, you know, which stacks make the most sense? How do you put the pieces together? What does that look like? Um, are you building what I call a monolith? Or are you building a component-based structure? We go, you know, we talk about Tableau and the ability to do great Tableau work. You know, it's part of the whole Salesforce suite now. But people sometimes think that oh, it just integrates in really well. But it's still not operating as well. Kind of piece. So you have these kind of different decisions and different kind of items that. Every company looks at differently in what they're going to do and the way they're going to do it. Uh, talk about build by rent or subscribe. The whole subscribe model, you know, uh, I mean, the ability to classify it as an operating expense versus capital expense, you can get into the financial component of it, you can get into the other components around, you know, how you actually then 
consume it as well, how you want to support it, your reality gone are the days. I can remember one of the companies I worked for, we bought a lot of Lotus Notes, partly probably because IBM was a very good client. But it was one of these things where they literally sent CDs out to everybody to vote on what you do. Okay. Privacy and globalization. The world as we know it changes every day. And the reality is I have a company that's here, but the reality is I'm engaging with customers all over the world because as long as they've got an internet, internet connection, they can get to me. All right, so how do I handle that? How do I work that with the right policies and procedures, things like that? But also, how do I handle you know, the back end components of that as well? So external, internal kind of integrations, what makes sense? You have a few whole like tech and kind of platform ecosystems that exist today where you know I'm building one kind of streaming set of components, a part of the company is building something else, we have the ability to link things together, make them work in a real seamless way. So it's you know, how open do I make my system? Do I want to be closed? You know, there's all, all these different dynamics that are out there to make sure that I operate. The same thing exists in terms of my talent and my human capital that's out there. Some people here, some people in India, some people in China, some people in Argentina, some people in Belarus, Hungary, all over. And I can interconnect them in very different ways. Okay. So success is incremental. I think sometimes, and, it's, and this has been around for a long time, I'll tell you, many of these items are not things that are necessarily all of a sudden changed overnight. The reality is, is, you know, stay focused on the goal. Be successful in digital transformation. What are the real goals? Small step, steps make great progress. You know, the reality is I, I've been involved in a lot of different initiatives on a big grand scale. And it's usually pretty easy to kind of just pinpoint kind of what's going wrong or what has the higher degree of risk to fail based on how much of the ocean How do you keep those goals focused and directed towards those areas that will have impact and build upon each other? How do you invest in change? You know, change of the organization, change of your talent, change of technology, process, procedure, policy, potentially, collaborations, partnerships, all of those kinds of stuff. You know, controls are key as well from the standpoint of having the ability to manage the process. Probably everybody here is about agile and you know, I'm an agile project manager. I have the ability to work there, or maybe I'm a traditional waterfall or agile in on, which is just horrible as well. But I mean, all of these are very different flavors, you know, as well as team based development, things like that. But their their approach is the question is how do you select what you're going to do, create transparency, prioritization, and manage control for the next six years to change your curves as well. Because the reality is. In three months from now, I can guarantee that the, you know, there's something out there that will impact your business. You know, whether it's the pandemic getting a little worse, whether it's it getting better, whether it's you know standpoint of new policies and procedures around you know big tech privacy, cross-border sharing, things like that. And then the last thing I'll leave you with is optimization is continuing. Like there's a lot of planes still in the sky. Flight aware for those air travelers. Um, and I just say, you know, it's constantly going on. You know, information flow is instant. The reality today is that in the world that we live in, something happens in one part of the world, you learn about it. You see, you might learn about it two to three weeks later, you literally learn about it in the past three months or the next five months. Consumer behavior shifts rapidly. I think a lot of consumers like to game the system. So if the system changes, they like to figure out how they can game it to get whatever they need. Those people that are travelers or hotel stayers, I mean, you learn how to work the point system, for example. I know that I'm going to get more points here versus there. You get all those kinds of things. But the reality is consumer behaviors shift constantly, rapidly, and create new things, which requires then an update and change to the experience. Like, for example, one-click shopping, you know, it's great that you go two things, but you know, everybody now wants to be able to point it. Now I want to integrate it into 
Talent needs to evolve. You know, you I learned you know RPG three a long time ago, but now <laughs> you know when you go to the Java stack and you go to that net, you can learn other things. But your talent needs to evolve because what it does from a tech perspective, from a process perspective, the way it manages, the way it leads, the way it evolves. Okay, and the number one thing I always recommend to clients at times is their investment in their talent pays off. Distributed operating models, whether it's BPO work, service work, creative work, there's a lot of different distributed models that are out there. People talk about global models, making them actually work and operate in the right way can be a very difficult challenge. In fact. And then as today's group and more and more security is paramount, meaning if you don't have the right security in there in terms of what you're trying to govern and manage, it finds itself you know, dealing with. That's all I have. That's a quick five minute or so, 20 minute kind of roundabout overview of digital transformation, trends, insights, things like that. If you have specific questions, I'm happy to take them.